Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jeff Goodman. I'm the Vice President of Communication and Partnerships at the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation. And I'm really excited to be at Unity Temple today uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, my friend Heidi, who's behind the camera, um, has been my partner in crime on so many things over the last several years. It's great to be here in person with Heidi. And I'm also excited, I am here with my niece, Caitlin who uh, has not seen um, nearly as much Frank Lloyd Wright uh, uh, architecture as I have. So I'm looking forward to getting Caitlin's uh, take on being in this beautiful space. But um, Heidi asked me to talk a little bit about um, what moves me about being in Unity Temple. And I think, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot at the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation um, is what we call Frank Lloyd Wright's Architecture for Better Living, which you see um, manifested through these meaningful connections to nature, the arts, and each other. And when I visit Unity Temple, of course, you know, the first thing that strikes you when you come in here is the light. The light, the everywhere the light. Um, but I really see this space as kind of a prime example of this architecture for better living through you have, um, you know, a church space which has a pulpit and a congregation, but there's really no um, no real hierarchy between um, the pulpit and the congregation. Everybody is here um, connected as one community. So you have, um, you know, have these benches that are just um, surrounding the pulpit in the round. And instead of necessarily directing everyone to look up at, um, at the pulpit, we're all connected to each other through this community um, that's really uh, uh, enhanced by the architecture. Um, so, and then of course there's, you know, even though we're trying to, um, Wright's trying to kind of shield us from um, the busy street that's going on outside here at Oak Park, he doesn't cut you off from nature. You're always connected to nature um, through this, uh, the, these vast windows and the skylights that um, keep you connected to the natural light. So um, you're always um, a part of the exterior, even though you can't really look out and see what's happening on the street. And then finally, connection to beauty. You know, there's all kinds of ways that, that uh, right keeps you connected um, to beauty. You know, first and foremost, there's um, the acoustics here. This is a place where singing and music happens. Um, so you're always connected to the beauty of the arts that way. And then, you know, the beauty of the building. These just incomparable um, light fixtures that you have here, um, the art glass, um, the color palette, everything about this space is a piece of, you know, work of art in and of itself. So. When I, when I look at the space, I really get this feeling of, of connection to nature, to the arts, and to each other. Um, but I'm interested in talking to my niece, Caitlin, here. Um, Caitlin, I think you've been to, I know you've been to Talia. Whoa, don't, don't, don't break the church. Um, I know you've been to um, Talia and West, because I showed you around, but yeah. I think that might be your only other Frank Lloyd Wright experience. Yeah, I think so. So, what do you think um, when you come in here? Was it what you expected, and and uh, and what was your impression when you walked in? I mean, different from Talies and West, it's one building and it's all connected. But when you walk in, you can see like the Frank Lloyd Wright style in the windows and the light fixtures and just the geometric angles of everything and the skylights. But I mean, it's beautiful, and the fact that you walk in and everything is like so. So centered on seeing each other and not just looking up at one thing. I really like that. And there's so much light in here, especially in a city when it gets really cold in the winter. You still get so much light, and it feels like warm in here, even when it's not warm outside. And I mean, it's just really a beautiful place. Was it what you expected, or yes and no? Because it's it's a church, so it's a different experience than going to Talies and West, but it has a lot of the same style as I've seen there and like just looking at the windows and the skylight like it's all very distinctly Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah, Talies and West of course you know is all about natural light in the same way that this is 
Um, and I do want to mention, because Heidi will slug me afterwards if I don't, that, uh, that uh, this is a great time to become a member of the Unity Temple Restoration Foundation. Uh, there's a 10% discount for the month, Heidi, is that right? 10% discount, and you know, uh, no matter where you are, no matter whether you live in Oak Park, whether you live in Illinois, um, this is um, one of the world's most important buildings. Um, it is part of the UNESCO World Heritage designation, uh, along with Taliesin West and Taliesin and five others. Um, this is uh, this is an internationally significant place. One of the best ways that you can support it is by becoming a member. So there's a discount now. Um, the, the tours will reopen again um, sometime this year, maybe September, and um, you know you can come out here and visit and uh, come to not only tours but events and, and other things out here. So I am um, not only putting on the hard sell for membership because um, Heidi told me to, but because I think that you should do it, and um, it's a great way to support just an incomparable building. Um, so. Was that good, Heidi? It's fantastic. You know, earlier we were talking about uh, pulling the community in, and I know you alluded to that a little bit. Are there any other ways that you feel like this building connects? Yeah, I think you know one of the most one of the most incredible features um, is how, and, and this is a signature right move in a lot of places, is how right kind of um, uses movement through the space to an accomplish to accomplish a, a certain goal. So. You know, a lot of Franklin Wright fans know about compression and release. So, you know, you're squeezed in through a tight space and it's dark and then you're kind of exploded out into this burst of color and light. Um, and at Talies and West, like he'll use compressed spaces to kind of make sure that you're, you know, moving, you know, not lingering where you're not supposed to linger and moving you through. Um, but Unity Temple has something really special in how he moves you through the space because he brings you in on either side of uh, the chapel um, through, um, you know, a smaller doorway. So it's you, you come in as one, and then when you exit, you know, you come back through this this uh, you know on either side of the pulpit, and there are these larger double doors on either side. So you actually come into the chapel as an individual, and you leave together as a community, and. You know, there's no better way to think of connecting people through architecture than that. I love it. And then, Caitlin, since this is only your second Frank Lloyd Wright uh, building you've experienced, are you inspired after being here to visit some more? Yes. I mean, it has a lot of the features that I loved seeing in Taliesin West, and I'm interested to see how he took those design elements and kind of used them in different ways in different spaces. Yeah, and that's that's you know one thing that's really remarkable. One of the many things that's really remarkable about, about Frank Lloyd Wright is he has his principles of organic architecture. There are these ideas that he wants to um, wants to pursue through building, and but it's all about time and space. So Unity Temple could only exist in this exact spot. If you tried to, to plant it um, in the desert of Arizona, it would not be right. Just as if you, you tried to build Taliesin West right here in, uh, in Oak Park, Illinois, it wouldn't look right either. So what you see is, you see these ideas executed um, for the time it was built, for the, um, for the, uh, the space it was built, the actual location, um, but also, you know, what was the latest material at the time? Um, what was what were technologies like at the time? And then finally, what's the purpose of the building? So since the purpose of the building here is worship, it's going to be executed very differently than um, you know an office building, a uh, an auto dealership, or a home. So it's uh, you know you get to see these same ideas, but they don't look or feel the same because they're in a different place. 
love that. And uh, I just want to thank both Jeff and Caitlin so much for being part of our Live at Unity Temple uh, series. And Jeff, since you come here all the way from the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation um, out in Arizona, is there anything you'd like to tell us about what's going on with your organization or any new things coming up? Yeah, so um, uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation, you can find us at franklloydwright.org. Um, we have um, uh, tours going on at uh, Talius and West. And in fact, um, I was going to say if you want to brave the, the, the heat in Arizona, but I'm actually sweating right here in <laughs> Unity Temple. So, um, so, you know, what difference does it make? Come to Arizona this summer. Um, we're actually putting um, Frank Lloyd Wright's hat and cane on display at Talios and West for the summer, a little bonus if you, if you come out in the heat. Um, and uh, we are, you know, slowly getting back into the swing of things, into full steam. Um, and we are gonna have some exciting things that I can't announce yet, but coming up soon. So stay tuned to us at, at franklyright.org. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Um, and I also wanna make sure that, uh, that I say if you do and you should become a member of the Unity Temple Restoration Foundation. You should visit their website at utrf.org. Um, so Heidi, thank you so much for inviting us out today. Um, it's nice to be here with everyone. And um, come September, when uh, Unity Temple is open for tours again, I encourage everyone to come out and experience this amazing space. Great, thank you so much. And thank you um, all for watching today. We'll see you again uh, live at Unity Temple next week.